Hi everyone, it's Roger here from What's On at DisneyPlus.com. In this interview, I'm speaking with the supervising sound editor, Greg Hedgepath, who's working on the Searchlight Pictures film Chevalier, which is coming out in cinemas on the 21st of April. Um, so Greg, could you give us a bit of an introduction to yourself and kind of some of the films you've worked on? Oh, okay. Um, hi, I'm a supervising sound editor based in Los Angeles. And you're actually in my home studio. You can't see much of it, but a lot of us work it work from home. Uh, and so I, as a supervising sound editor, I'm in charge of the overall quality of the sound uh, that comes out of the, the the mixing stage. There's a big room, you know, with the console. We call it the dub stage or mixing stage. So all the pieces that come together before that, the dialogue, the uh, voice re uh, replacement, which we call ADR, the shape of the music, uh, sound effects, background, sound design. Sound design is, is creating things, creating something new that never existed before, like an animal roar that you've never heard before, like, you know, the Velociraptor and uh, Jurassic Park or whatever. So that's that's the kind of thing I do. That's cool. And so what actually um, is the main job of a, like, a supervising sound editor? What does that, what's, how does that work? Okay, so, so, um, I'm responsible for the for hiring the crew, uh, so that means I need to know various um, uh, editors around town and who's good and who's not. Most most of the people in Hollywood are, are great. Some people have uh, some people are better at certain things. Like some people are good at guns, so I have to know that's a gun guy. He's a car guy. The, this woman is good at such and such. So you know, I hire these people, and I also have to watch the budget. So I have to manage the budget. So what happens is uh, at first we get a script. When I say we, that's my crew. Uh, uh, I work with a woman named Bobby Banks, who's my ADR supervisor and, and kind of uh, partner. And so we get the script, we go through it. We first will usually read it just for the story and then to get a sense of it and the arc of the story. And then we'll go through a second time and make notes for what we might need or additional things we might want to add in, uh, different sound ideas to propose to the to the uh, filmmakers. And so now we know how many weeks are in our budget. So how many weeks we have to do X amount of work. We'll have like maybe four weeks to prep and then we'll have a uh, director's cut screening where we screen to an audience and then we'll do some changes and maybe do a, two more. And then after that, we'll have more time, maybe six, eight weeks to really prepare the sound properly and get it ready so we can start mixing it. Then when we go in the mix stage, we do what's called pre-dubbing, pre-mixing, where we take all the elements, because we may have thousands of elements, you know, between dialogue and effects and different things, take the elements, and then we'll kind of funnel them down to different groups. Like here, these are the main actors, these are the background actors, these are the main effects, here, these are the car engines, brake squeaks, uh, bullet whizzes, bullet impacts, you know, gun mechanisms. So we have all these different groups of sounds that we have kind of put them into manageable groups. Then we get to the stage and we start mixing those all together with the music, which comes in from the composer. And we start doing what's called a final mix. And once we get into that mode, everybody gets involved. That's when the director's there, producer's there, studio people come in and see it. Um, and uh, we we will play it for everybody, and we'll go through uh, several rounds of changes. Play it, do more changes, come back, do more sound changes, and then when we're done, then we do what's called a print master, where everything gets married down to just one track that has everything on it, and then that gets married to the picture. And that's kind of a very simplified way of how it works. It's kind of one of those things as well of like, uh, it's almost like a job probably most people don't even realize is actually happening. Um, because generally, you know, we we're, especially with movies and stuff, you you know, sort of mm -hmm. sort of visual effects and composers stuff. But the sounds is so it's so important, especially you know when you've got all the big speakers and stuff. So it's a really big problem. Mm -hmm. So what was the biggest challenge working on this film? Um, I mean, I guess you could say there were several several challenges because it's a period picture. So I think. One of the things, when, when I interviewed with the director, Stephen Williams, I told him, I said, I've been waiting for a picture like this because I've done, you know, I've done horses and wagons and I've done different kind of ambiences, but I'd never really done them in a period picture. And I wanted everything to be correct. Uh, so uh, that was a challenge. So we're, we're in France of the late 1700s. And so, you know, streets are cobblestone. So you can't just use regular carriages going down streets. You have to have them on cobblestones. Um, 
and and then also trying to think of what would the various sounds be heard that we would be hearing in France and, and putting those together, putting them in the right space. So that was a challenge kind of shaping France of that time. And, and it was uh, the beginning of the French Revolution. So as we go through the film, the, the voices are starting to build up more and there's more mayhem in the streets. So always kind of keeping that going, that, that theme going. We had to do that. That was a challenge. And, uh, and then also, of course, a big challenge was the music uh, and just fitting. You know, music was, was key in, in this film. So everything else had to kind of fit around it for the most part. Uh, and, uh, but it, it came out stunning, I think. I think the music in this, in this film sounds good. So that, that's a challenge. Um, and also uh, because there were crowds everywhere, you know, we had to really shape the crowds and record crowds chanting and, and stomping their feet and doing all kinds of things. And, and sometimes when you're recording that stuff, uh, you'll have an idea how it integrates in with everything, but you never know how everything's going to play together because you may think this is a big moment, mo a big moment to have a cheer, but the music may do a big crescendo there. So somebody's got to win. Both sides can't win. So what's more important? So there are those decisions that we're making through the whole process. So, you know, there, there were, I mean, there were, there were more, even more challenges. There were, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't want to give away the plot too much to, to people who haven't seen it, but there, there's just some really interesting moments. Uh, there's one moment when, when Joseph Bologna, who is Chevalier, uh, Chevalier means, I, be, I believe it's like a soldier to the court of Marie Antoinette. Uh, his real name is Joseph Bologna. And he's taken in this alley and there are all these people around and they're his first time he's seen, he has seen people of color, even though he's a person of color himself, because he's lived in this rarefied atmosphere of upper crust France. So he's in this alley, uh, which is quite wide and quite tall. And it's a big party going on. People are cooking, playing music. So this, this alley has to show a transition, this alley moment, the transition that happens to him uh, as he sits down and plays some music. So we really wanted to convey convey that. And there are a lot of moments where he's going through something, where he he gets drunk and gets thrown out of some place. But we wanted to, as he's walking down the hallway, we want to really have you feel what's inside of his head and how confused he. You know, there, so there's just lots of so many moments like that. Like it seems like every scene almost had a moment like that, that was kind of key like that. Um, over your career, you've worked on a number of different um, films and stuff. One of the ones, that obviously, a couple of ones that sort of stood out were like The Princess and the Frog and Frozen. How does like doing like animation to like live action, is it different in what you have to do with, with your role? Yeah. Um, yeah, because with animation, well, put it this way, with live action, there's a lot of subtlety. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see somebody walking at a distance and we'll hear, hear their feet ever so slightly. Um, a lot of nuances and with, with uh, animation, not nearly so much. So things are further forward kind of like in your face because the animation's a little, just a little closer to you a lot of the time, even with, with 3d animation. So, um, and it, with uh, animation, a lot of the time it, it's, um, you know, it's, it's comedic. So you really have to concentrate on what can I do with sound to uh, make this moment better, make it funnier. Like in uh, Princess and the Frog, I think it's like the last scene <clears throat> where I don't want to try to sing too badly, but th this the song that goes is something like uh, in New Orleans, da da da, da 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 da, on the riverboat queen, and it just played like that. And you see uh, the main character kind of getting off a streetcar and walking around, and just I just it just there was something missing. It kept bugging me. And I realized, oh, we need a streetcar bell, and it, it needs to be in tune with the music. So I found a good bell, pitched it in tune with the music. And so now when you see the movie, it goes, in New Orleans, da -da -da, bing, bing, da -da -da -da, on the riverboat queen, ding, ding, ding. So that's just one of those little things, you know, that, that we're constantly adding. Uh, uh, in, 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 in that one, there's a scene uh, where the song Transformation Central plays, and uh, there's this guy who's kind of like a witch doctor, this mad witch doctor. And they do just a crazy, the animators on this thing just did this amazing, crazy thing where, you know, like two people turn into a whole room full of people. And fireworks are going off and just everything's rubbery and, and just, you know, woo, woo, 
boom, things are shooting everywhere. And but you know, there's music, so the music has to be on top of everything. But you know, I did sound design for that, and and uh, it was a lot of fun. It took probably a couple of weeks to do, but because uh, people don't realize how long it takes to do this, because for us, the hardest part when it comes to effects is finding the right effect. So in other words, it's easy to edit it in once you have it, you know, move it around and maybe ch change the level. But finding the right effect is the hard part. And uh, and my my tendency um, is to, to if there's something that happens on screen, I try to have as few sound effects represent that sound as I can, if I can. So somebody slams a door, we might use you know, two door slams, like a high one and a low one that's boomy, you know, to, to show that they're mad. Whereas some people may cut more. They may cut six doors to really give it a lot of force. But the more, in, in my mind, the more things you add, the muddier it gets. So I like to have detail. So I'm, I've kind of gone off on a tangent about the, regarding your animation question, but <laughs> my, my sound philosophies, but uh, it's, yeah, it's, those, those yeah. things to think about. It's so it's so interesting to kind of hear the side of things and like just like I said, like yeah. learning a different element of what goes mm -hmm. into like making films because you wouldn't even probably even most people wouldn't even mm -hmm. think of that when you like like you say like with yeah. the bell with with that one there. Um, yeah. So oh, also, like, yeah, carry on. You did say you did say one thing? Uh, oh, um, you you made kind of a good point because you say people don't know about this, and the thing is, the the better we do our job the less likely it is that people are going to understand that these are, these are sound effects. Because especially in a live action movie, a lot of the time people think, oh, there's an or orchestra off screen sawing away or, or, or if, you know, somebody's uh, running that we're actually hearing their feet, we're not, we're hearing Foley or somebody's, uh, uh, you know, driving a car, they think we're hearing that car engine. No way are we hearing that car engine because if you heard it, it would be very boring. So um, our job is to make the movie be hyper real. Uh, so you're going to, if you're in a room in a restaurant or something, there's more going on. You're going to be hearing little details that you normally wouldn't hear. But each one of those details, if it's a laugh off screen, somebody may say something at the table you're at, you hear this laugh off screen. They're not responding to this person, but it's punctuating what that person's saying. So we're doing all these little things all over the place to, to really drive home the meaning of the scene. Yeah, it's it's quite it's quite fascinating because it's almost it's that kind of weird thing of like it's visual effects for your ears in some ways. It's just like you don't even yeah. you don't even notice it's going on. Um, so um, we want to ask um, sort of anyone looking to kind of get into this um, sort of role or job in the future, what would be kind of some of the tips that you'd give people? Okay, well, you know, I would say if if you're interested in it, I mean, one easy thing to do would be to just uh, download something off of you know. YouTube or, you know, record a commercial or something or something with your phone and put it on your computer and then use uh, just some simple software that you can find, whether it's GarageBand or something, and start editing sound to it and, and just get the sense of what it means to adjust sync. So if, if, if it's like clap, clap, you know, you want to move it so it's clap, clap. And, and the more you do it, you know, in the beginning stages, the more it becomes second nature where you see something, you go, oh, that's two frames too late. Oh, that's three frames early. And you just go, could you move that three frames? And so the more you the more you practice, the more it becomes second nature. So I would tell somebody to, to, to do that. And then as far as uh, getting work, I mean, that's kind of the hard part. But here in Hollywood, everybody is unionized. So to get in the union, you have to have a certain number of hours uh, having worked, and that would be working non-union. So wherever you are, uh, if you were planning to, say, come to L.A., go to New York or work in some, some union facility, you might do good to be to just work in your area if there's a sound facility where you can come in as an entry level person and learn and you can get you can, uh, uh, you know, look at your hours and keep a record of your hours of what you've worked on. So you can show the union, oh, yeah, I've done 50 hours of this or this show or whatever, and because that's one of the requirements to get in. So that's something I would do. And then um, after that, if you you know want, want to work a uh, union, which I prefer because, you know, frankly, it pays more and more benefits and that sort of thing. But, you know, if you came to L.A., then you need to just start looking around, finding the different uh, uh, places that you might want to work, uh, 
you know, Warner Brothers and, and you and then you look around, find out who works at Warner Brothers, try to meet that person. I work at Formosa Group, find people who work there and, and just try to make friends. So getting back to Chevalier, um, what was one of your highlights working on this film? Oh, I mean, without a doubt, the highlight was working with the director, Stephen Williams. Just, uh, you know, I've worked with a lot of directors and a lot of good people and and he just rates up there with them. I mean, he's a really smart guy. Uh, you know, just fun to be around because he, he's you can, there are just some directors who are just great storytellers. They'll just sit there and tell stories when we're on a break. And he's one of them. And I find that the people who are good storytellers uh, verbally are also visually quite good from from what I've seen. So so, I mean, boy, that was that was a highlight. Um, when I'm working on a good movie or a great movie like this, one of the 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 most fun times for me is working in the mix, the, the final mix, and hearing everything come together because it's really it's really a, a form of art. You know, I, I can't draw, I can't sculpt or anything, but when you're molding the sound of a film, it's really it really is like sculpting, you know, sound sculpting. But you know, we're we're uh, just you know, we might say that footstep right there, pull that down where he jumps off and lands here. We want that a little bit louder. We want people to go oh. Want the people on the left, not the right, you know, and we're doing all these little intricate moves. And I just love it because, when, because, for example, uh, we went, uh, a group of us, or my wife and, and some of the, the crew, went to the red carpet this weekend and heard the film in the, uh, the El Capitan Theater, Disney's El Capitan Theater, which is a magnificent theater. It's a big room and it has a lot of reverb. Well, actually, it doesn't. For a room that that big, it should have a lot of reverb, but they've they've really managed the acoustics in there, so it's got a great sound. So, a lot of the scenes in Chevalier take place in concert halls, and this essentially is a concert hall where we're playing the movie. So it was just the perfect venue for it, and it just just sounded amazing. So, so you know, when we've had some time away from it, and then get to see it again all that mix experience and everything starts coming back and you start realizing, Oh yeah, we did this, we did this and did it. And it's just, you know, we're just sitting there like elbowing each other. Yeah. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. 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 And it's, it's really just a joyous time for us. You know, we, we just geek out over this stuff. Oh, that's a requirement. You have to be a geek. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that always helps. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for taking your time out yeah. to speak to me. Learned so much about um, the whole process. Um, yeah, and it, it sounds uh, just kind of amazing. Can't wait to watch it when it arrives on, in cinemas on the 21st of April. Thank you so much again. Thank you. You're very welcome. Great.